welcome to another Zelda podcast. My name is Katie and I'm here with David. Hi, Katie. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well. At this point of recording this episode, you know, I, I, I spoke a few episodes back, two or three episodes back about how it was like, oh, we haven't seen each other in months, mm-hmm. which was true. But now we're getting a little bit more into a normal schedule. And I, I just saw you two weeks ago. Yeah. I, it's nice to have this be a bit routine again. It is good. But um, like the long lengths of talking before recording has not lessened. <laughs> The long, think, wait, what? The long lengths of talking? Yeah, we. I think me and you have just gotten very comfortable with each other. So <laughs> we, we'll, like, you know, we'll show up, plan to like record at a certain time, and then we'll just sit and talk for like an hour, just about random stuff. Oh, are we starting late? Is that a? No, that's not a jive. That's oh. like no, no, no. <laughs> like that's like a genuine. Like yeah. I, I'm really happy. Like it's gotten like chill, you know. I see. Because like before, I would come and I would be like, mm, I'm just gonna sit here until it's oh. time for the mics to turn on and talk. Oh, I see. Well, you're getting less nervous too. Yeah. And also, um, we both obviously go to class together. It was super fun last week to just literally bump into you on the street. Yeah, I was down walking. In Chicago. I'm like, what? <laughs> Were you going to a class or coming from a class? I was coming from a class. Because we used to share a bunch of classes, but the way our majors are working now, it's I don't think we really, you know, a lot of the mm-hmm. actual like voiceover classes, we took a few of them together, or radio yeah. classes, but now it's our, you're, you're almost done with your school career. I yeah. think this is your final semester. This is my semester. last semester. I still have one more year after this because I had to go down to part-time. Yeah. So oh, we don't have any shared classes, but boy, yeah, that was fun. Just like, I was just crossing the street and I was like, there's Katie. <laughs> and honestly, do you know what my emotion was? It wasn't like, there's Katie, my classmate. It was like, oh, there's my co-host with AZ for AZP <laughs> just walking past her. Yeah. I, I mean, I was in the same mindset. I was like, oh, funny seeing you here, even though it's like, you literally go to the same school as me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yes. We are getting a bit more into a pattern. I'm looking forward to more of this yeah um for today well technically you're hosting this in I, i'm sorry i kind of took <laughs> no, over there for a okay. second by accident it. um we're going to be talking about uh the changes from breath of the wild to tears of the kingdom what we liked what we didn't like as much or just different things like that this was your you pitched this idea and i was into it oh i guess i did i guess i kind of forgot i pitched it um it was probably one of my early ideas because at the time i'd only played breath and tears um <laughs> so i was like let's maybe, do maybe that this one's been sitting in the spreadsheet for six months i was gonna say probably <laughs> i have like a list on my phone i have like a little folder for azp notes mm. and i have like a ton of ideas some of them are not very good and some of them are yeah i'd say kind of decent that's how it goes it's all right yeah but yeah. um before we hop in we got some listener feedback yes yeah um do you want to do three and I'll do two? It looks like we've got five in the bag here. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I'll just start at the top of the list. Um, cool, cool, cool. Is this a link to my heart? That you're pulling up uh, or a different one? This is a different one. Oh, go for it. Just go for it. I'll, okay. I'll track with you. I think this is on Instagram. I could be wrong, though. I can tell you um, in a second once you. It's on Insom- Insomniatic Panda Hero. It says... Hello, I just wanted to say how much I love your podcast. I've been playing various Zelda games since my brother first showed me Ocarina of Time when I was five years old, and it's been an addiction ever since. I haven't played Breath of the Wild for over a year, but I've been listening to your podcast for about two months now to get me through my work days. And since starting your podcast, I've started and just finished my second playthrough of Breath of the Wild. Nice. I just wanted to thank you for sparking my Zelda joy again. Your podcast is amazing, and I look forward to many more episodes to come. Well, Insom- Insomniatic Panda Hero, thank you so much. That Yeah, I think this was, I think I pulled this screen grab technically from the Facebook business suite manager where you, oh. can, you can aggregate all of your comments and likes and stuff from all their different platforms. Mm-hmm. And that's why the screen grab is a little hard to tell. But I think this might have been, yeah, an Instagram direct say, message. I was going to say, it was like a DM. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah, very cool. Going back into Breath of the Wild. Um, my brother showed me Ocarina of Time when I was five years old. It's been an addiction ever since. How old were you when you... Oh, I know the answer. How old were you <laughs> when you first started playing Ocarina of Time? And probably it was like 20, 21, 20? When I started playing Ocarina of Time? Mm-hmm. I haven't touched that game yet. Well, that's I'm what I was working saying. working on Skyward. Have you not, oh, you're doing Skyward. You've not started the Ocarina of Time 3D no. thing yet? Oh my gosh, Katie. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm almost done with Skyward. I'm literally, I've been following along with the Zelda dungeon. uh, Walkthrough? Walkthrough. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm on like chapter 15 of 18. So I'm very, very close. Which we learned, of course, Mazas, who was sitting right in that chair a couple months ago. um, He was on our show and he 
he not, I shouldn't say single handedly wrote that walkthrough, but he oh, had did a, he really? He, told, he tells a great story in that episode about how he got Nintendo sent the game to Zelda Dungeon a week early mm. for them to write the walkthrough, and it was like the first really big thing That's that awesome. the site did. So you are literally walking through a little bit of Zelda Dungeon history by yeah. going through that walkthrough, right? No, now. it's very helpful. Um, it's been great. I. I have been losing Zelda Dungeon more and more and more. and Losing it? I've been using it. <laughs> no, I've been using it more. And I am very grateful to them over there. Thank you, Zelda Dungeon. Thank you. I appreciate you. Did you get my notes about um, the the spreadsheet they sent us over for their next marathon, by the way? I think I texted it to you. It was a shared Google I was going to say, you probably I probably did, and I just forgot about it. Well, let's talk about it on the break, because yeah. he sent us now an actual spreadsheet where we're going to put it. They're going to include us in like all the different playthroughs yes. next year. Yes. And so I think we're going to go for the whole week. I'm going to literally ask off for the week. Let's to. talk about it off okay, air. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> anyways, that was very cool. Well, anyways, yes, Insomniatic Pet Panda Hero. Thank you for listening. Thank you for enjoying the show. And hopefully you like what we have to say about Breath of the Wild and Tears. Oh, that's right. It applies very much. This was this is one I got a while back from Tara Leg- Legger. Ledger? Legger? Um, this was also an Instagram DM. And she says, hi, David and or Kate. I'm messaging, I'm messaging you on behalf of my son, Jake, who has been listening to your podcast daily for over a year now. He said that season five, episode six on Spotify cuts at 19 minutes and 50 seconds and wanted me to let you know. Thank you for making this podcast. Well, thank you, Jake, for noticing. Yes, of course. Thank you, Jake. And then thank you, Tara or Tara, for communicating this message to us. It's adorable. Once in a while, we do get messages from um, younger listeners who use mm-hmm. their parents' accounts to get in touch with us or something like that. And that's always a, a real treat because I love to include them in the conversation. Yeah. And Jake is absolutely right. We have a few episodes. The way that we – I don't want to get too far into the weeds here, Katie, mm-hmm. but I kind of want to talk about this a little bit. The way that we – Pub, all of six five publishes their episodes um this started popping up about a year year and a half ago the way we publish doesn't play super nicely with spotify mm. the way that so spotify does this thing where if you aren't a certain if you don't well not to put too fine a point on it but mm. if you don't pay spotify a certain amount of money or if you're not some kind of like certain listener what spotify does is they take your mp3 file they copy it and put it onto their own server. Mm. This is a little bit controversial. Some people, some podcasters like this. Some podcasters don't like this um, fact because Spotify, part of their terms and conditions, is that they literally duplicate this MP3. Mm-hmm. Right? Their reasoning is that if our server were to go down, Spotify could still provide this service, and our show wouldn't go down on their end. Mm. So they can provide a certain amount of quality for their listeners. Um, we've so 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 it's true there's there was like a studio demands it episode that only half uploaded to spotify yeah. there's a couple azp episodes that only half loaded to up uh, to spotify and it was it was a little frustrating for a while even though i'm very happy to be on spotify and mm-hmm. I, we also get that really great feature on spotify where people can leave comments to specific episodes which yeah. apple podcasts doesn't do so you know there's pros and cons to everything however about three or four months ago i um found a company that i liked a lot and um, we have tra- we're slowly transitioning all of our six five shows over to this other podcast service provider that, long story short, plays nice with Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, this this company that we're using allows for what's called a direct you know direct access. So Spotify doesn't copy your files; they do go straight to the new server. Which means if we update a file or up, so in other words, this episode that Jake's talking about, yeah, I've tried to re-upload <laughs> a full upload in the past, and Spotify says no, thank you, we've already got the file. All right, I don't want to get too salty for the internet, yeah. <laughs> here, but it has been frustrating as a producer. So we found this other service, and we've been moving all of our shows over. I started with some of the smaller shows first, and by smaller I mean the ones that had less episodes. Uh, Broadway through Broadway got put over. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, I brought Turn by Turn over to this new service, and the real test was Studio Demands It. Mm-hmm. So Studio Demands It is the second most popular show in, in the Six Five Media library. And so you don't want to risk, you know, you don't want to just when you're transferring literally all of your content over to a different yeah. server into a different service. There's, you, you know, if something yeah. messes up, there could be um, enormous consequences. And so we slowly did it with some of the smaller shows. We really bit the bullet and brought Studio Demands it over. We learned a few things along the way. Fortunately, we didn't have any downtime with Studio. And there's a lot of things that I've learned that are really great. These things also include that when we bring new shows into 6.5, 
<clears throat> Jake, uh, I'm talking to you right now. Uh, <laughs> J- Jake is speak- Jacob is speaking to us about making a Pokemon show that may or may not be called another Pokemon podcast. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> cool background stuff that I probably shouldn't be talking about right now. But it informs how we're going to be bringing these new shows cool. in. Cool. Here's the thing. I have not brought another Zelda podcast over to this new service yet because we just have hundreds of thousands of listens and and hours and hours of content that if we clicked over to the new service and something went wrong, Mm -hmm. we could be possibly down for days or weeks and really it could be catastrophic. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. My intention is when we're done with season six, we'll be down for a month and a half or so. There's going to be a good week or two where we're going to transfer our whole show over to this, this new company, this new service which in the long run is going to be even better. It's going to allow us to do dynamic ad placement. Mm. It's going to allow us to update files if we need to. And it's going to allow us to get real-time data uh, in our analytics from Spotify, not just Apple Podcasts and the other companies. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it between season six (laughs) and seven. So you and I, we're going to finish out this season. Okay. Another four or five episodes on the old server. And we're going to be switching over. And Jake... Give us give us two or three months and uh, uh, episode six of season five shall be on Spotify in its full. <laughs> All right. That did take a little too long, but here we That's go. That's okay. That's okay. A lot of people don't know this stuff yet. Only the behind the scenes I people know, know this stuff. stuff. This stuff goes way over my head. <laughs> this is usually more like Patreon content that I share with the patrons, but I guess we're, we did this one live. So anyway, yeah, Jake, thanks for listening. Thanks for the support. Tara, thanks for letting Jake message us. And uh, all all shall be well. Between season six and seven. I can't, honestly, I can't wait. We're going to change our outro song in season seven. Yeah. We're doing a few things. Season seven will be a good one. Even um, though six has been great. Yeah, anyway. I'm very excited. <laughs> All right, what do you got? Um, I have a comment on, I believe, a blog post mm. uh, from commented on the post world building yes 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 this is uh listeners can go to our website and read all of our blogs and if you sign in as an account or whatever it's not doesn't cost anything then you can like leave comments it's like how a normal blog works actual posts so this is from maximus sharp hi my name is max and i'm in high school i just wanted to say how much i love your podcast and support it It gives me an opportunity to hear people talk about my favorite game franchise. I discovered you a while ago and are revisiting the episodes. And I think you should do more episodes like this. You four together are very funny and wonderful to listen to. Thank you for creating this podcast because it makes me feel that I have company. Love you guys. Three green hearts. Three green heart emojis. Yes, this was our, we very, another Zelda podcast by design, its format is only two people talking. Mm-hmm. And it's very rare. Only once in a while do we allow it to be something like four people. Um, obviously, you and I participated in one of those episodes mm-hmm. with the Zelda Dungeon we, when we had them on as a guest. And and we've done a few live episodes where there's four people on. But I kind of like it when it's just two. That's like our base format. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was one of our first times ever trying to do a four-person episode. And it was a world-building episode. It was technically a holiday episode Mm -hmm. where i previously lived kate came up to chicago mallory and ryan coon two of our blog writers came up and the four of us sat in i we didn't even record in our normal studio i just set (laughs) up a bunch of mics in the living room and we uh we did a a, an episode all four of us just round table people talking over each other you know um and it was a lot of fun so yeah thank you thank you maximus uh noted there might be an opportunity to do a couple four-person episodes here in this new recording space that we have in season seven we'll see very exciting. I am trying to make it so that it's off camera for the patrons right now, but like the couch area over here that we could like move mics over there. Yeah. Um, remember we, when we did a couple couch episodes, those first episodes that you recorded with me back yeah. in, uh, in the beginning? It was fun. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Uh, we also have over on, um, I think this is, oh, this is Spotify. Spotify comments. Uh, season six, episode four, our Zelda Wii U episode, Katie. Oh, nice. Um, Z Tay said, hey, I just wanted to say I love your podcast. I'm a very big fan of the Legend of Zelda series, and you guys have inspired me to try different. Keep up the good work. Three green heart emojis. Immediately under is another one um, by, I think this person's screen name is Log In. Then maybe that's a joke. Maybe that's a meta joke. Um, hey, great pod. Helps me focus when I'm working on the most random things and could not think of a better game than Twilight Princess, which was the first Zelda game I beat by four green heart emojis. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Yes, I appreciate it. The Zelda Wii U episode was a ton of fun to do. You and I, Katie, we recorded yeah. it right here. And uh, thank you for leaving us comments on Spotify, which is a great way for us to get more exposure. Last but not least, what do we got? Last but not least, um, I think this is a Spotify. I'm just going to show it to you. 
That I, is an Apple podcast that's an Apple review. podcast. I'm so I need to learn what these formats look well, like. Well, as we grab these screen grabs, maybe we can I can start like we can like put in notes or maybe okay. we maybe we change the file name to where it is. Okay. What if we do that? Because you Let's and I both that. have access to this file folder yeah. now. All right. So this is a link to my heart. It says Breath of the Wild fan turned Zelda super fan. I started listening to this podcast a couple months ago because I was really enjoying Breath of the Wild and was craving Zelda conversations. I started listening from season one and I'm now in the middle of season three and I could not be more pleased. Listening to this podcast feels like chatting with friends about one of my favorite things. Not only that, but it has also inspired me to collect and play some of the older games and remakes. Mm. Since starting this podcast, I've picked up copies of Link Awa- Link's Awakening DX, Oracle of Ages, and Minish Cap, all for the GBA. I also just got a GameCube for Christmas and the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition, so I finally just started playing Ocarina for the first time. I don't have much time to game because adulting, but I'm very excited to experience this game for the first time, even if it's only for an hour at a time. Thank you to David and Kate and to the entire roster of wonderful guest hosts for creating and upholding such a positive community and for inspiring me, a newish Zelda fan, to dive deeper into the vast and rich universe. Okay, bye. (laughs) And five stars. Five stars. Uh, A link to my heart. Thank you so much for that wonderful review and story. Uh, This is fascinating, Katie, because if A Link to My Heart is truly only in season three right now, Mm -hmm. of course, we designed the show so it can be listened to in any order. I was going to say, they'll come into They're going to keep going through and then they're going to find out who you are and then all the rest and quite quite a journey. Oh, I was going to say, they're going to come up to season six, Mark, they would be like, that's my comment. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm kind of saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's super cool. Uh, Link DX by Cartridge, Oracle of Ages Cartridge, and Minish Cap Cartridge for the GBA. Awesome. Technically, DX and Oracle of Ages are Game Boy Color and Game Boy games, mm-hmm. but um, they work on the Game Boy Advance. Super cool. I love it. And yeah, the GameCube version of the Collector's Edition, I also have. It's a ton of fun, and it plays well. Mm-hmm. So this is this is one of my favorite kinds of comments we get from listeners when they talk about how (laughs) um, listening to the show has inspired them to go hunt for older cartridges and older games and play them. Super cool. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's done for me. (laughs) Getting on, uh, getting a chance to be on this podcast has made me really delve deeper into Zelda and take more time to appreciate the stories, I guess, and kind of look further into it. Cause I think I, I don't know if I mentioned it on recording or just to you off recording. I've, this is my third time trying to play through Skyward not saying this game is bad. I really enjoy Skyward. It's actually one of my favorites now, but I just was having issues in the, because the first time I had issues was I was playing it just skipping through the dialogue really quickly and then was complaining that the game didn't have any story. And it's because obviously didn't have story because I'm not, reading it i was just used to like cut scenes and being told the story well, oh because you had to literally read it you were yeah. like get this out of here well yeah i was like not paying attention i was just skipping through being like whatever 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 let me get to the game and then when i got to the game i was like oh there's no story what am i waiting for and so <laughs> yeah no it was very dumb it was my first time trying to play it this was i think even back before i got on this podcast okay okay um so then i went back and tried playing it again got distracted and then this is my third time but that being said, I'm almost done with it and I have greatly enjoyed it because I'm actually taking the time and not trying to rush through it. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting down and reading and now I'm like, this is an amazing story. This is an amazing game. My conceit is that all Zelda games are better when they are not rushed, personally. Mm-hmm. You know, just let them be the pace they want to be as you play. Yeah, um, that's what I've been uh, learning throughout my time here is I'm someone that's very not patient. <laughs> and so I'm kind of learning patience through the games of just letting it be what it is and like take my time with it. And then I've come to really love them for that. Wow. And and you we have increased we you have increased your Zelda repertoire already, even mm-hmm. since when you joined the show um, through a lot of these switch releases, which is kind of interesting and cool. Yeah. And we're just about to cross the line into you playing older systems to play some yeah. of the older games. So in many ways, with respect, we've only scratched the surface with your exposure to no, some absolutely. of the Zelda games. It's yeah. Very cool. I, um, after Skyward, I'm definitely hopping over to Ocarina of Time. My mm. brother got it for me for my 3DS for Christmas, which is very nice of him. I am actively playing it on my 3DS right now, which is right here on my desk. Oh, nice. Um, Do you have like the 3DS XL? Or yeah. I was going to say, that's huge. I didn't have a 3DS for the longest time. and But honestly, I picked up this 3DS XL. It's the Galaxy Edition. Nice. Um, I don't 
I don't mind saying this, but I don't actually love the the galaxy design. I was really mm-hmm. hoping to just get like a black one or something yeah. like that because apparently I'm old and boring. But um, this is all that was sold. By the time I bought a 3DS, yeah. which was only about four years ago, they were just about to stop making them. So I literally bought this at a Target organically off a mm-hmm. shelf, but it was like the last 3DS they ever even made. Yeah. And I'm happy to have the 3DS XL. The screen's nice and big. It's got the second joystick. Do, yeah. do you have the second joystick at least on yours? No, we don't have a second joystick. <sighs> I just have like the regular 3DS. I've had it since it came out. It was, uh, I got like a bright red one. It's my favorite. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. Uh, that won't change your Ocarina of Time playthrough, but if you ever play, Maj- Ocarina of Time does not use the second stick, uh-huh. but, Ocar- but Majora's Mask does have an active live joy- uh, camera controls on that stick, which oh, is nice. Like, okay. like almost like a normal controller. I was going to say, because I also have Majora's, okay. So I have Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and probably a link between worlds. Mm, triforce heroes maybe it's triforce heroes um that i have for the 3ds so far Mm -hmm. so we're gonna do a triforce heroes episode it's gonna be you me and someone else i've got i have extra cartridges literally behind me in the studio here so that we can like find another person to play and then do a review episode but anyway (coughs) i'm realizing we're talking so long yeah (laughs) let's get into what i was talking about um we're getting just so chill that we just keep rambling about stuff how many longer episodes are fine i don't know yeah um, okay, so actually getting into the, as my dad would say, the meat and potatoes. Um, Kate used to say that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Breath of the Wild turning into Tears of the Kingdom, different changes, things that were added, what we love, what we don't love, all that jazz. Uh, so, David, did you want to start us off or do you want me just to... Let me start off with a couple quick hits that are more like designy stuff. Yeah. There's little things like um, things I've noticed where when you go into like a waterfall it says swim up now instead of swim upward Mm -hmm. um there's little technical things that have been different some of the sound effects are different i've noticed that um when link teleports Mm -hmm. when if you if you do fast travel in breath of the wild it fast travels and link faces the camera but in tears of the kingdom link faces away from the camera yeah or rather the camera goes behind link there's a lot of teeny tiny little things like that I think everybody obviously experienced the new pause interface UI immediately. Mm -hmm. I think I like the Tears of the Kingdom UI much more. I did not love using the right stick on Breath of the Wild to go between the menus. Mm -hmm. Um, Other other quick technical hits. I love that Tears of the Kingdom shows you a map as it's loading and and as you're transferring. Yeah. So smart. So cool. Because it gives you context of where you are. Um, And then let's see. What are some of the other things? I love that they, I actually love that they didn't change weapon breaking, but they gave you options to make weapons stronger because Absolutely. I'm okay with weapons breaking, honestly, yeah. in the, in in both of these Zelda games. It doesn't bother me. Um I do think it's frustrating sometimes, but I also think that's part of it. Yeah. And then let's see what else was there. A Just few resource other, management. A few right, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And technically I saw something on the internet the other day where if you really want to, you know how like in Skyrim you can technically if your sword is wearing down, you can go to like a blacksmith and, and yeah. fix it, right? There's kind of a version of that in Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, I saw when you throw it into the Octorok. You do an Octorok. Yeah. You do a rock Octorok or whatever. Yeah, and They'll it spit it back it out, out at you. Good. Yeah. Um, and then so the biggest thing that struck me was that user interface stuff. And um, I think that's all the like quick technicalities. Oh, here's a big one. Let's start off with this technical thing. As I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, the first 20 hours of Tears of the Kingdom, I was kind of like, yeah, I get it. It's Hyrule. But every location I went to felt different Mm -hmm. and i went what i mean by that is i was like and i don't just mean like the main locations like the hills between i was like i know this hill is in the same spot i know these trees are in the same spot why does it feel different it doesn't look the same i thought maybe they changed their render engine a little bit or something like that um and it finally hit me i know exactly what it is this is this i've 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 found this in other sources on the internet everybody's talking about like how they moved where the sun is Mm -hmm. from breath of the wild to tears of the kingdom and I finally started doing, I started jumping into Breath of the Wild over the last week and going back to the same spots in Tears of the Kingdom and trying to find them around similar times of the day. And yeah, the sun is in a totally different spot in Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> and so the shadows, like when you enter Hatno Village, when you uh, are at a, anywhere really, the, the shadows are in completely different spots in Tears of the Kingdom yeah. than they are in Breath. So what might have been like a shadowy little cove going through the forest somewhere now, because the, the sun is, for some reason, in a completely different spot, it's like sunny because the sun's shooting down the cove instead of coming from the side. And it's really changed. It, I was like, that 
That's the thing. Yeah. There's a layer over all of Tears of the Kingdom by accident where everything looks a little bit different. All the trees, you know, like you're used to being on the Great Plateau and having the shadow of the trees go to the right or something. And now huh. they're going to the left or whatever it is. Yeah. And so if you go outside of like anywhere, really anywhere, but if you go, you know, where in Breath of the Wild, when you first come out of the shrine of whatever, mm-hmm. uh, the, the the pool of juice yeah. to live in for 100 years, <laughs> um, the shadow goes up the light is coming from behind and it goes up over but if you do it right in the beginning of the game it's actually the shadows behind link so it's almost 180 swapped i don't know why they did it i was gonna say why why would they change it i can't imagine um maybe there were some choices that were the only thing i can come up with is like maybe there's a couple key spots on the map now that they really wanted the lighting to be a certain way Mm -hmm. like maybe the rings above kakariko village they wanted to look a certain way i would love to learn why nintendo decided to move the sun yeah and i don't dislike it but yeah, it's just I, a very random change. Yeah, and once and there's there certainly cannot be a canonical reason. I'm sure this is just I was going to say, tech. I was trying to think of like what could have happened in the past to have changed it because there's a whole like time travel thing going on. But mm-hmm. even that, there's like nothing that would have made the sun change. Maybe just maybe there were some glitches in Breath of the Wild where um, the shadows of a mountain would hit in a certain way. And they, they were, you know, they maybe. said, oh, if we move the sun, we don't have this, te- this glitch. Maybe just maybe the introdu- introduction of the Sky Islands because they do cast shadows down below. Yeah. Maybe that angle got weird and all of a sudden you'd have a shadow race across Hyrule Field or mm-hmm. something and they realized they had to change the sun's path. I would. I, I bet hope, it's like that. I hope in years to come or months to come, there's an answer as to why the sun got moved. I'd love to learn yeah. why. Oh, that's fascinating. I, I, I never really thought much of it. I always just assumed... Oh, maybe it's because I haven't played Breath of the Wild in a while or right. something like that. Yeah, because you can be... And I know they did some things. Like there's, you know, there's, there's changes all over the terrain of... Yeah. The thing about Tears of the Kingdom, yes, they included the depths. Yes, they include the Sky Islands. But even actual Hyrule is easily over 50% changed. You know what I mean? Layout-wise, they have hills in different spots and things. There's water in areas where there isn't in others. I love all of it. So that's why everything in Tears of the Kingdom, it's like, I feel like I'm in the same spot, but it also feels different. Yeah. And in the spots where it's identical, it still felt different. And I think it's because of the lighting. Yeah. So I'll stop talking about that. Um, But those those are all my quick hit like not narrative based things because uh-huh. I know we're probably going to talk about the different towns. We're probably uh-huh. going to talk about the different champions, but that was a, some of my UIE stuff that I noticed. Uh, before talking about like the towns and things like that, I also want to talk about, I mean, the changes in gameplay because you have the five different abilities now. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about changing over to like the more build heavy mechanics? I was okay with it. It took a little getting used to. Uh huh. Took about five, six, seven hours of getting used to it. I only did. I only built exactly what I needed to in the beginning, and then I'd kind of play around. You build a, a, a crappy cart and try to go mm-hmm. across Hyrule Field before you go into the depths or something, and then you start learning as you start collecting more of the actual zone eye pieces, and you can do powered things. And once you get the little steering wheel controller yeah. thing, everything changes. I love building now. I build all the time. Sometimes I just go in and just build stuff, mm-hmm. and I've definitely like saved favorites, and I really enjoy that. I love building different flying machines. I, I enjoy that quite a bit at this point. Um, I still don't have a ton of batteries. I only have like three or four full batteries. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I'm playing slow. I you guess know, that's You fair. know this. I still haven't even gone to Death Mountain. So I don't, oh, I cannot. Okay. I, cannot I was going to say, I don't know how far in you you are at this point. I just finished the Gerudo stuff. I mean, actually, I said that to you many episodes ago that I just finished uh-huh. the Gerudo. And yeah, I've played another 10 or 15 hours, but I've just been, I just fool around. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's fine. I go in and I'm kind of like, I feel like going into this valley today. And I go into that valley and maybe I build something, maybe I don't. And that's what I've been doing. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's really what it, I, I've been spending a little bit of time over in the jungles re- recently. I did a couple side quests in the jungles and just got a couple extra horses. Mm-hmm. And I did the thing with the glowing horn animals that were in the original 2019 trailer. Oh, what are those yeah. things called? The Odoo or whatever they are. Uh-huh. They still haven't given me anything yet, but yeah. I, mean, I fed them all a bunch of. I was uh, going to say, I haven't really fed them too much. I just was like, oh, that's cool. I fed them all. And if you feed every single one of them five uh, luminous stones, Mm -hmm. their horns start to glow. But nothing's happened yet, so i got to go back and check it out. I'm sure they're going to, you know, spit out some other gems or something. Nice. And so I've just been kind of hanging out in the jungles for a while. But I'm I'm just that way. I like to just – I just hike around in these games. So anyways. Yeah, I mean – I'm not the biggest fan of the building mechanics. I've just never been someone that really enjoys that kind of part of a game. Mm. Um, not saying it's bad at all. I certainly made some stuff and had fun flying around. I just miss the original mechanics a lot. Of I do miss them as well. Especially the cryo-freeze like one. However, I, know, I will I say I really like Ascend. 
Again, it's probably the one that's most like the original five. That's probably why I like it so much because I don't have to think as hard to use it. It's just a simple do it thing. Yeah, but yeah. it is very helpful if I'm like, I just need to get to the top of this mountain and I can just zoom all the way up. It's fun to pop out and see where you are. And then, yeah. and then I love that they give you the option to go back down. So if, you, if you're like, oh, no, I'm good. And you yeah. go back down. And there's been some really fun ascend puzzles as well. Yeah. No, I really I've been really enjoying uh, the ascend ness, I guess. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I agree. That's the most like the classics. I do miss the ice blocks the most. I don't really miss Revali's Gale because there are other ways to do things. Yeah. And I realized that with. What's the little bird's name? Toto? Toto? Uh, Tulin. Tulin. Um, with Tulin. You know, basically in Breath of the Wild, we have a vertical navigation uh -huh. thing with Revali's Great Gale or whatever it is. And with Tulin, we get a horizontal navigation. Which is good with the Ascend ability. I agree, but it completely recontextualized. It's the first day of school, and I'm walking around downtown Chicago with hundreds of other students. Everyone's getting back from summer break, and you can tell that they're happy to see each other after a couple months. For me, however, it's been a little longer. Hi. I'm David, and I want to introduce you to Returning Student, a documentary podcast that I've been making about my return to a college that I left 20 years ago. I'm back in the same city, at the same school, the same student ID number. Everything else feels completely different. My fellow classmates are literally half my age. My professors work in my industry. Sometimes I wonder why I've come back at all. But then I get the opportunity to sit down with one of my professors and have a conversation with them, which uh, usually yields a little bit of wisdom. You can find the show on all major podcast providers, as well as our website, returningstudentpodcast.com. A lot has changed over the past two decades. And we are back. And Welcome back. <laughs> And we're going to keep talking about the changes from Breath to Tears. Specifically, we're moving on to more like the towns and the culture. Yeah. What, there's a lot. What do, what do we want to I mean, just start? about every single town has been yeah. riffed on and played with, which I loved. Yeah, absolutely. I got to the point where, you know, when I first started playing Tears, I was like, well, I went to Kakariko and I was like, oh, okay, there's big rings now. I don't know if I care. But mm -hmm. honestly, within about five hours of play, I found myself getting excited to go check out the new different towns and see what was going on. And I think it, it took me going to Rito and completing the dungeon and seeing it change afterwards mm -hmm. when I was like, oh, every, you know, every single little, even Lurlin Village, every single area has a nice little twist right now. Yeah. Which allows us a cool little story adventure. And, and, say, and there's recourse afterwards. It felt like because in Breath of the Wild, there was like little side quests you can do in each of the towns. But it felt like there was like a major thing happening in each of the towns that you yeah. had to go and check out yeah. in Tears. And I really feel like it benefited from that, giving it kind of a new spin, even on some places. I mean, all of them kind of changed uh, visually, but mm -hmm. it made it feel like it changed just culturally as well. And yeah, I, I mean, I guess we could it. start. I just realized we could start with the probably something that every player experiences almost immediately is that there is lookout landing now in the middle of Hyrule Field. Yeah. And so one thing that I really enjoyed about that before, you know, now we know it to be our main hub. Uh -huh. Once you start playing the game for a long, long time, once you once you have been playing the game for a long time. But initially, you know, you drop down into Hyrule and, and all you know is the Breath of the Wild version of Hyrule. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming everybody plays Breath of the Wild before playing Tears. And you're kind of just getting your bearings again. And you're just starting uh -huh. to walk around. The map's all closed off. We've just come off the Sky Island. And slowly but surely, you start to walk around. And usually in the distance, you see like this small camp or culture starting to rebuild. Yeah. And I remember th that was the, that was going to Lookout Landing initially was when I was kind of like, oh. Because Breath of the Wild was after the, you know, 100 years after Calamity. Uh -huh. And there was a couple of surviving towns. But basically, it was just a bunch of ruins everywhere. Mm -hmm. But there weren't really people in those ruins. Yeah. And I think my imagination would allow me to imagine, <laughs> yep, um, <laughs> people in those towns. But in Tears, there really were little developments. And even Castle Town is, is slowly getting rebuilt a little yeah. bit. And it felt really cool to see progression. 
Exactly. I was nervous when it said, oh, like had to look out landing and I saw like it was near the castle. I was like, should I be there? (laughs) (laughs) And then I just started the game. Uh, But it was cool getting to go there and seeing they also have like this little underground bunker going on. Tons of fun. Cool. Yep. Uh, And also seeing Pura because I love Pura and it's cool seeing her kind of back to her original like self. beautiful self uh it's yeah. same with was robbie, robbie also returned yeah but robbie's still in his old form for no some yeah reason. okay robbie's still old i'm surprised her didn't then give him what, the potion i was gonna say or impa i'm surprised that she like impa's her sister i'm surprised she didn't give her the potion i guess impa probably didn't want it though i suspect that um pura became popular and i suspect that this is a bit of a retcon well yeah um that you know pura was popular enough in Cal- age of calamity or something her character model was oh yeah that nintendo was like oh yeah 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 she made an age reverse potion and she's back to the they just wanted to use that character model if i may and i'm fine Abs- with it no, I they support absolutely it. did yeah because she was definitely the most popular thing out of age of calamity everyone mm-hmm. thought she was gorgeous and they wanted to see more of her so i'm not mad about it I loved seeing Pura and Tears and getting to like have more of her cutscenes and talk with her more. So yeah. I didn't mind. I just think it's kind of funny from a story standpoint. I know. I know. I know. I like to think that she didn't like she made it on accident to make her back to her age and she doesn't know how she did it, but she won't like admit that she doesn't remember how. And I don't want to get into. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. And we don't want to get into the details of like how she ate or she she became young and then so like is her is her skin and bones literally growing and stretching? We're not gonna go there. Yeah. It, it creeps me out. Yeah. But Pora is Pora from Age of Calamity, and we have decided it to be so, and I'm fine with it. Yeah. But no, look at landing, it's great. It's there's not much happening, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's mainly. Well, for the when start you first get there, if I may, I'm so sorry. When you yeah. first get there, it feels like a ton is happening. That is because true. Because based on nothing, based on an empty, broken down fountain, which is what that area is in Breath of the Wild, yeah. I remember thinking, like, oh wow, it felt like not colonial times but like you know wild west times in america Uh where you're just starting to get camps and forts built up and people are just slowly in this case putting their lives back together but just starting to begin to recolonize hyrule i was was awesome i less that nothing was happening but there wasn't many side quests i guess is what i'm trying to say oh um but yeah, going there and seeing everything that they've built was amazing. And I went around and I talked to every single NPC and all the different vendor stands because it was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot going on mm-hmm. here. From a side quest standpoint, there wasn't too much. There was like some here and there throughout the game. But I, I would say there was more at that beginning when you first got there because it is that first area that you stop by. And Lookout Landing does evolve a little bit as you progress through the game. It does. Like after each little dungeon or certain checkpoints, you know, there's extra mm-hmm. little things that pop up and you can feel a little bit of growth there. So you even feel the development happening organically. Yeah. Like I love that um, after each, well, let's just say dungeon, um, like you go, I went to Rito and all of a sudden there's a couple more Rito hanging out in Lookout Landing. Yeah. And you really feel like you're bringing the communities together. Mm-hmm. So cool. No, I really appreciated that. And same with like, you get to go out for a while, you come back. Oh, we're having issues with monster here. So we sent out this night group. If you want to go get like, join them, you come back. Oh, I I just came here. I wanted to open up a stable. So it really feels like you're helping this place build and grow until eventually it'll be like a whole big town. Yeah. 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 Who We can only imagine what it would be like afterwards or what, you know, I I don't, we're not going to get a breath of the wild three. Nintendo's already said it. They uh-huh. said that the next Zelda game is going to be something totally different. Mm-hmm. Story-wise, I'd love to see what a Breath of the Wild 3 is because yeah. I'd love to see Hyrule kind of back in its full form, uh-huh. but it's okay. I wouldn't be surprised if one of these days they released like a DLC or something of like in the future. Maybe. There was a little bit of controversy over the Breath of the Wild DLC. DLC was very popular in 2017 yeah. when Breath of the Wild came out. And Nintendo's... They've been reluctant with DLC. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, Super Smash Brothers has a ton of DLC, and yeah. there's you know, Splatoon, and there's a few other games that do it. But um, I feel if I'm I'm saying this, Nintendo has never said this. I feel like Nintendo kind of did some of it because they almost felt like they had to because that's where mm-hmm. the industry was at. Um, IG and Numa has actively said that there is no DLC for Tears. They put the okay. whole game in there, and they have no intent to make any DLC. Okay. And I actually support that. I was going to say I don't mind that at all. I mean. Mm-hmm. It's that's it even means you get what you get. That's even why they um, steered away from the amiibo. Um, you yeah. know, you can okay, fine. You can buy some of the new Tears of the Kingdom amiibo, but every single thing that an amiibo gives you in breath, you can get in game in tears. Yeah, that's true. So, um, I wonder. Actually, I don't know. Is a pony? Do you think you can get a pony in game? I don't know about a pony. 
because I definitely scanned my link I until say, I got a pony. And I've been Pona. riding a pony everywhere in tears. But yeah. But yeah, all the costumes and stuff like that. Um, was there another area that struck you that struck you when, uh, you know, as, yeah. as far as how different it was? For me, it was Lurlin. I. Yeah. I've only flirted with Lurlin okay. right now. I have not attacked I was gonna say, the I actual pirates. I don't want to spoil anything, but it, Lurlin, I, I mean, it was fine when I first played it in Breath of the Wild. I didn't spend much time there like you did. I was just <laughs> like, eh, you know, it's like a town. It's fine, whatever. But then going back and kind of getting that relationship with Lurlin and with the people there, it made me really like the town and become really attached to it. And also, like, when you help them, you get some free stuff there, which felt like, oh, my gosh, I'm the town hero. Like, ah. I get I'm in, like it's in awesome. tears or in breath in tears. Oh, when you. Oh, when I you see help them. Yeah. One thing I'm looking forward to with Lurlin, which I haven't done yet. I've, I've kind of like I've scouted out the pirates. I've considered how I might get in there and uh-huh. do what I need to do. But I haven't gone in yet. Um, I'm hoping the town literally rebuilds afterwards. You help it rebuild. <gasps> that's like the that's the thing. It's like you are the town hero. You help them rebuild. You help them get people coming in from different towns to like repopulate. So it's a reinterpretation of Terrytown from Breath. Absolutely. Oh, it's cool. Free. And then like you get little things like since you're like the town hero, you can stay at like the inn for free. They'll give you like a free meal at the restaurant, like things like that. And it's so sweet. Oh my gosh, I want to go do this so bad. It's, it's amazing. Because at first, so you know, when I first went to Lurland, I was like, all right, attack the pirates, whatever. I don't really care. But to know that this is what happens after the fact, I'm in. Yeah, I would say, like, attacking the pirates is just, like, a reason to let you in, be around this town more and, like, mm. help out with the town more. And also, um, uh, Bolson is there. and, and Bolson's hanging out in Laurelin? Uh, he's, 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 the, he's, like, the main of the, the sun, right? Love it. Done. Yeah, Bolson's yeah. the one who started okay. Terrytown. Oh, no, no, not Bolson. Uh, gosh, what is his name? Maybe he, I'm wrong. Uh, I could be wrong. He's he's like the main guy that originally had. He has like the little pink around his head. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that is Bolson. Yeah, the one who uh, builds your house for you in Brad. Yeah, he's the one that like is there, and he like puts together, and you help him rebuild. Oh, he comes back. Yeah, you help so him rebuild Lurlin, and it's great. Maybe that guy's name is Bolson. No, I think I can't remember. But anyway, I was gonna say I can't remember. And <laughs> <It's> son. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I love Lurlin. Ooh, ooh! I can't speak to that, but now I got to go check it out. It was also a cool thing of, again, I keep talking about Skyward. It's all I've been playing recently, though. It's fine. Uh, I just finished, like, the pirate quests in Skyward. And I sure, was like, sure. it's the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you'll see repeating themes in Zelda games as you play more and more of them, which is cool. Yeah. The fun thing for me is that you're going to be experiencing them, I don't know, in reverse. Yeah, that's, that's what's been interesting because it was saying, like, I had talked previously about me thinking like Beetle was an original Breath of the Wild character and realizing <laughs> no, he's in previous ones and same with a lot of stuff. But yeah. we're not here to talk about Skyward. Um, how did you feel about what was going on with Tenno? Yeah, we've we've hinted at this in a previous episode. When I first got to Hateno, I was not in love with the whole mushroom thing. Yeah. And I also wasn't in love with the like the political quest that was happening there. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in love with the fashion thing. I got what they were doing, but I had such an emotional connection with Hateno from yeah. the or from Hatno or whatever Hateno um, from the first game that I just wanted to go back to. Me too. But I realized no, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be different. You know, mm-hmm. there was there's another thing. I remember after playing Ocarina of Time, the original Ocarina of Time for Nintendo sixty four, the graphics looked a certain way, mm-hmm. and when Majora's Mask came out. They had the RAM expansion pack and they had a little bit more memory and they were able to make their textures be a little bit more detailed. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first started playing Majora's Mask in 2001 or 1999 or whatever it was, I think it was 2001, um, because I think it wasn't Ocarina 98 or something, it doesn't matter. Um, Sometimes, even though the graphics were technically quote unquote better in Majora's Mm -hmm. Mask, there was like really strong decisions being made when you go yeah. when you, there's an area where you go to the Deku and there's like massive pink flowers now and mass you know whatever and I remember just feeling like oh it doesn't feel like Ocarina I don't know yeah. if I like it or not it's cool it's technically cool and but now you play Majora's and you just know what you're getting into uh-huh. some of the graphics are going to be a little there's going to be uh, stronger choices mm-hmm. in some of the art design when I went to Hateno I kind of was like. Oof, we're doing strong choices with these yeah. mushrooms. I feel like a lot of it for me too was I'm a big fan of like mushroom design and things like that anyway. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it for me was it was so dull looking. Like all of the mushroom architecture and stuff was oh, like browns and wow. pale colors. And I was expecting these 
Like, I feel like if it was like these bright, vibrant purples and reds, I would have been all for it. But it felt like it dulled down the, I don't know, experience or like the environment because it wasn't bright and it wasn't interesting. Big, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess. And it's like, how do you how do you visually express a fashionista's influence on a town mm-hmm. in a you know if in reality it would be much more nuanced it would just be certain styles of clothing that people are wearing mm-hmm. and i feel like in a video game if you need to express this a little bit more with broad strokes yeah it's like all right we're doing mushrooms she's the mushroom lady and everybody's gonna have mushroom hats and it's gonna be mushrooms on the houses yeah and i think sometimes maybe that's just the choice that needs to be made because otherwise that nuance may not even be mm-hmm. taken in but it was a bit too there was, the iconography was a bit too much for me. Absolutely. Where it started to remove me from reality a little bit. Yeah, I felt like I felt so disconnected from the town. And which was sad because Hatana was my favorite. And I was also a little upset. I mean, you can argue whether or not this is technically Zelda's house or not now. Mm. But when I went back to my house as Link and I was like... Why is Zelda stuff here? Where oh, is really? my stuff? <laughs> so I loved that. I no. actually, because immediately as I went in, I immediately, within two seconds, wrote an entire headcanon of how the two of them moved in together for two years well, and like yeah. they're in love with each other. Well, no, no, no. I quickly got over it and I was like, wait a minute. Like, I love, because I, I think the Link and Zelda are so cute. And I do think they moved in. I was just upset. And I still am a little upset <laughs> that there was so much stuff about Zelda and there was nothing of Link's there because it really felt oh i guess i didn't really notice that yeah because it really felt like zelda moved in and kicked link out (laughs) or he gave her the house that's another yeah or he gave her the house and which you know whatever but and i guess it's like what would you have of links i'm gonna didn't really have i'm comfortable asking this i'm not trying to get randy yeah is it still just this one person bed it is oh and that's why everyone's like they must have moved in together interesting yeah because it's it's zelda stuff it's a one bed and then but yeah that's why i was a little mm. upset i still am a little upset i'm no. like at least something of his we've talked about how we love the school in hateno in I previous episodes school. i love it too um and actually that reminds me this is in my notes for this episode there's kind of a a school theme in a fair amount of the areas there's a school in gerudo town like yeah it's kind of like we're teaching children how to do things that was like where did this come from in tears yeah i love it I love it too. I it, think it's sorry. I don't mean no, to no, you please, up. no. I was interrupting you. I I think it is. I mean, uh, I'm trying to collect my thoughts. Teaching has always been something very near and dear to me. Yes, and I have always loved the concept in games of getting to see the younger generation, seeing things being taught to the younger generation in games. Because you come in as a person that knows nothing about this culture, nothing about anything. And so you are in their eyes like a child in this game. So seeing them kind of teaching these different concepts and passing them down, talking about all these new things have happened that you don't know anything about, but Link would, but you get to see them being taught to a child who is new and doesn't know about these things that have happened. That, you're so right. I never even considered that. That's just strong expo- exponential. It's good <laughs> storytelling. Yeah. Um, expositional. My tongue got yeah. tied. Expositional uh, storytelling where you have to lay down some of the history and some of the rules, the best way to do it is have Link uh, overhear it being taught in a class. Absolutely. it's And then also it makes you really involved when you have those like little side quests where you get to take pictures of things and show them or bring them weapons and yeah. whatever. And then you hear them tell stories kind of based around these things. Same with the Gerudo going to like the Gerudo school because you get to teach in... Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which I am so in love with. I have not done that yet. You haven't? You get to teach. You get I to just teach the night finished, classes. I just finished the Sand Temple yeah, or whatever it is. You get to teach how to talk to a Vo 101. So this is interesting because you know what happened was I um, I did the big Gibdo bug or mm-hmm. whatever. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. And immediately I just kind of found myself going over to the jungle. And so that's where I am. Yeah. Kind of, I've been hovering around Lorelin right now. I didn't realize that is something else that I really, really like about Tears and something that I haven't fully experienced yet because because it doesn't happen in Breath of the Wild, is that there are, after every single area you go to, certainly the areas where there are, I'll mm-hmm. call them dungeons or temples, there is an after game, so to speak. There, there is stuff is. that happens very much after you help the areas. And that doesn't happen in Breath. In Breath, it's like, all right, you've done it. And maybe two or three NPCs are like, thanks for the help, bud. Yeah. But like, I'm realizing, even as we talk about this, each of these areas, they're dynamic in Tears of the Kingdom. Very much. They have states of change throughout the game i was gonna say and i feel like 
with tears, there's so much that you can miss because with this uh, teaching how to talk to a bow or whatever class, it's not something that you get a quest for. You just wander into the classroom and mm. you'll talk with them. And then like the teacher will ask, hey, do you want to be like, like, do you want to help out with the class? You'll say yes. And then like the thing is, is it's these three different women in the class and each of them has their own thing. One of them is like scared to like talk to a guy to the face. So you have to like think of because it doesn't pop up with like objectives. So you have to think of how to fix this. So you put on a mask. And then she can talk and she passes the class Oh my gosh. and just different things like that. Sure. And it's so great. And I was really sad after I finished like the three girls, I was like, I want to keep doing this, but that's like the end of this little quest line. And you don't get anything for it. Cause it's not a quest line. I guess it's not a side quest, but it's just so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love that. I, I personally do like games where you kind of can have these just lived in experiences. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite kind of game. And that sounds like it's right up my alley. That's Absolutely. cool. Neat. Um, the other, I was, I will admit I was, I'm, I'm okay with this. I think this is almost by design, but I was a little sad when I went to the shrine of resurrection and it was just empty. Uh, I mean, it's not, you go down, I know you go down and you find like other things, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I was like, cause almost, that almost felt like Link's home more than his home in breath of the wild. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of weird to go in there and just really nothing. I mean, you know, like I said, there's a well there technically, but, um, that was the, all of the great plateau has a completely different context in tears of the kingdom because it's, it really is just kind of there. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, I mean, there's not really much you can do with it, I guess. Well, wait, actually, no, just recently I had a really fun side quest with the, um, putting the eyes back in the, the creature, the creature statue down in the depths. Oh yeah. You remember this? Yeah, yeah. So one thing that was really fun about the great plateau is that you finally, so I remember in Breath of the Wild playing in the Great Plateau and there's kind of this watery, there's a path that goes to like this watery pond that goes right up to the wall at the edge of the Great Plateau. Mm -hmm. When you do your three shrines, you get your glider and you get down below, it's very easy to deduce like, wait a second, this used to be the main gates to get up yeah. into this Great Plateau, but it's been since filled in with mud. And then because it's filled in with mud, the rain's just collected and we now have this like pond up there. Mm -hmm. But you don't realize it until you get back, you get down on the mainland. And in Age of Calamity, there are proper wooden doors there, by the way, in that part of the level, which was really cool nice. to see. Anyways, in Tears, I was just I was just farting around over by <laughs> the the you know Great Plateau a couple of weeks ago, and oh, I know what it was. No, it wasn't that. I was talking to I you know I went down under one of the mines and I was talking to the statue that says something like the plateau under the water. That's where I am yeah. or whatever. Okay, fine. It was, it was a cool little like playing detective and trying to figure things mm -hmm. out. So I immediately went to that same little pond or pool or whatever. And I was trying to uh, immediately, I'm trying to ultra hand something out of the water. Nothing's mm -hmm. showing up. I try to look into the water. I can't really see anything. And eventually I got down back onto the mainland. Well, whatever the normal Hyrule yeah. area. And I noticed that the rocks looked kind of bombable. Yeah. And I was like, wait, should I do this? And of course, we drain the water. Even the Great Plateau is dynamic in that sense, I'm yeah. realizing now. Even though I previously, just a minute ago, said it was a bit dull. And then that started a super fun uh, quest line where you do find the four eyes, which are basically kind of where those four original shrines were yeah. in Breath of the Wild. I had a blast with that. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got to <laughs> say about, about that. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was so much fun. Bringing the eyes down and then putting them back in and all that. Um, tons of fun. That was that was one of those that was one of those where I organically came across it and all of a sudden I was in the middle of this like quest that I didn't sign up for. Mm -hmm. It's not like I like talked to the person that said, I, I need five bobble berries. Go yeah. find them. This was like it just kind of organically it was I was connecting the dots and all of a sudden I found myself on this great adventure for an hour and a half. I was going to say, I feel like Tears has done a very good job of leaving things for people to find organically, I guess. Yeah. And not really searching around for side quests, not going and just seeing, oh, I'm just going to talk to this one NPC here because they have that little red exclamation point. Right. Instead, you have to just go and explore the world. You have to just talk to people to find these things because, I mean, unless you use like a guide or something, then you won't ever really know for sure because some a lot of these don't qualify as side quests because you're technically not getting something from it. Right. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. Which I'm Because totally what you're getting it. from it is the, the entertainment, experience. the experience, and then the story to talk about it. Absolutely. You know, like that's the th one of my favorite things about Breath of the Wild. And I spoke about this years ago is that sometimes literally just crossing a valley and going over a mountain ends up becoming a story that you tell your friends a day later because yeah. one, some event that happens or some little thing, it's not my favorite thing about breath of the wild 
and by extension, I'm realizing even more so in Tears of the Kingdom, is that very rarely in Breath of the Wild, we're, in previous Zelda games like Skyward Sword mm-hmm. or certainly Ocarina, people would say like, wasn't it cool when you got to Zoro's domain? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it cool when you did that that thing with the the thing with the monster in the desert? Mm. And everybody had the exact same experience in previous Zelda games because they are pretty linear. And you're experiencing this with Skyward Sword. Um, Certainly even Link's Awakening is super linear. It's really just, you know, how did you like it when you got to that part of the game? Mm -hmm. But with Breath of the Wild, when you talk to people about Breath of the Wild, they never have the same story. Absolutely. There might be key points. Oh, how'd you feel about that Goron? How'd you feel about that Gerudo? Or wasn't that one battle kind of cool? But even how people approach the battles often is different. Yeah, and well, I think like, that's great. Same thing when just talking about the flux constructs of like, yes, I thought that the way I was beating him was how everyone else was beating him, and then I heard a commenter say like, "Oh, I beat it a completely different way," and then you said, "I have completely different ways," and I was like, "I didn't even realize there was like a different way to do this." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, as we talk about that, that reminds me that maybe we should speak a little bit about the most the elephant, not the elephant in the room, but the most obvious change is the inclusion of Sky Islands. In yes, the depth. thoughts. I love the Sky Islands depths. I'm kind of whatever about. I think I'm inverse. I love the depths. I think they're so cool. And the Sky Islands are a bit bland for me. Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of it is probably because one, Sky Islands remind me of Skyward. And Skyward's one of my favorites. And I was really happy about that. Also, I love all the monsters you can fight on the Sky Islands. Mm. I like the flux constructs. I like uh, just the Zora Zora stuff. Or not, Zonai, excuse me. Zonai stuff is cool. Zonai stuff. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think the depths, it was because it's an exact replica of the above lands. Well, it's an inverted replica. I guess so. So where there's a mountain on Hyrule, it's a valley in the depths. Yeah. But I thought thing, that was cool. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, it was okay. I didn't spend, well, I was going to say I didn't spend too much time, but I got like all I could with the pose and I got all yeah. the different sh- uh, light shrine things. But I didn't really stop and battle much. And maybe that's to I my own deficit. I think I've mostly explored. I haven't battled much mm-hmm. either. I will say, though, there is a uh, gladiator style like ring mm-hmm. that you can go to. I think I've seen that. And I, I think there might be a few of them. But the one I specifically mm. did, I had a blast doing. I felt like it was such a good challenge and one that I it, it took me a while. It felt very much like some of those games where it's like you just got to keep learning the patterns and keep kind of like Dark Souls-esque where you have to just keep starting it and keep learning it. And it was specifically you went against all the kinds of Lynels. Oh, and it wow. starts with the easiest with and each of them have their own unique weapon. Mm-hmm. And then once you beat one, you go up to the next one, the next one. And if you lose or like die to any of them, you have to start all the way back at the beginning again. Oh, I loved that. I haven't fought a single Lionel. Oh, really? Or a Gleok. I just stay away from them. Yeah. No, Gleoks. I only beat one. I mean, it, there'll be a day. I'll do it for the fun of it. Yeah. But uh, wow, that seems intense to fight that many it Lionels. Is. It is very difficult. It took me a while, uh, but it wasn't frustrating, I guess, because mm. it was similar to me playing God of War and going up to the Valkyrie Queen. And I just have to learn her move patterns and learn the different kinds of weapons and keep going until I can like figure out how to combat different things. I see. I think one of the reasons, as you're saying this, I'm realizing that one of the I was I was saying like, oh, what's the next thing I can say about the depths? And I was, well, let's just do it. Um my favorite thing about the depths is the exploring. And mm-hmm. it, I, I know it's a, a, a an inverted replica of, of the mainland or whatever, normal, normal land. But I love just being in pitch blackness, shooting a little bead, mm-hmm. only seeing a little bit, going to that bead, shooting another one. I love just kind of like slowly spelunking around. Mm-hmm. And every five feet could be another little mystery or another little mm-hmm. cave or another little wall. And actually, most of the time, quite frankly... I might be the only person in the world that when I hit the light roots, I get a little disappointed because everything lights up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, I can see everything now. Um, it's just fun to like have that mystery. And that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite um, shrine quests in Breath of the Wild. Absolutely 100% was the pitch black shrine that you have to get yeah. to. I just love light mechanic uh, mm-hmm. adventuring. And so I really got that from the depths. And I also feel like the art style in the depths for me feels a lot like classic Zelda games. I was going to say, I think that... I think you kind of made me realize the reason why I wasn't a big fan of the depths. And it's because I don't like the darkness. I don't like like the dark colors. I like being able to see everything and I like everything to be really bright and vivid. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what I was getting to with Hateno of me saying like, I 
didn't mind the mushrooms. I just wanted them to be big and bright. Interesting. So, like, I preferred the Breath of the Wild exploring to the depths, or, like, I guess the Tears Above Ground exploring to the depths, because it was so bright and brilliant. And it it felt magical, I guess. Whereas the depths kind of felt more grimy, I guess. Yeah. And it's not that I, like, love grimy, but it's just such an adventure. Yeah. I will say then for the Sky Islands, um, I was really underwhelmed well they're very beautiful they are but they're very small they're very small and so it's it's more like when you're exploring the sky you're kind of it's not so much about exploring as it is connecting the dots Mm -hmm. it's like okay this is the the one way until you start building stuff this is the one way i can shoot myself over and maybe i can get to that island and maybe i can get to another Mm -hmm. island and i found that that was less adventurous because there's almost like little strings of paths across the map now, once you do start building little flying machines for yourself, then you mm. can kind of then th- then that exploration came back for me. Yeah, and I do have a bunch of different flying machines that I enjoy that I've built that I like to use. But um, and see, I kind of like that because I like the puzzle of it of yeah. just figuring out how to get from point A to B. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Is that does that is that any different? Than, oh, caves. The introduction of caves is a big one. Um, that no, no caves in Breath of the Wild or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I love the caves. I like the hobgoblins oh uh hor- horoblins horoblins yeah. yeah i was gonna call it a hobgoblin if it's not right uh um, that's that's spider-man <laughs> yeah that's a horoblin uh I, they were funny i think they i like them too totally new character <laughs> i actually like that the caves don't show up on the map Me and, too. and not just their entrances the whole dang thing yeah like you just kind of see your little green line move along and it adds a sense of mystery to them. I like that. Which I was going to say, oh my gosh, I have to pull oh, you're up, pulling his name. up a note. Uh, Colton and the Bubble Frogs. I loved their addition. I yes, think yes. they were great. I preferred that to um, Kilton, personally. Mm-hmm. Nothing against Kilton, but I used my monster parts a lot of times just to sell and make money or to use yeah. in ingredients. So having this alternative form to get things was really nice. Yeah. And I, I like exploring the caves. I like exploring the caves. I love that you just have to explore a little bit more, be a little bit more of your surroundings to find yeah. the bubble frogs. And it's like you always know there's one somewhere. It's mm-hmm. just where is it? And it's mo- super fun when you can kind of hear it. You're yeah. Like, you're like, Ooh, it's around here somewhere. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a ton of fun. I, I love the caves. And when I first went into a few of them, I was like, wait a second, I'm going to get so lost. It's not showing up on my map or anything. Now, I also, by the way, I play Breath and Tears with no HUD. So I have my map off on Tears. Oh. I don't do any... Um, even the hearts go away if you play in uh, wow. master mode. But um, not to try to make it more difficult, but I just don't like seeing the mini map. I yeah. don't like seeing any of that stuff. And I just like to try to memorize things with my eyes or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's a weird way of saying it, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I do, but it does mean that I go into the map menu a little bit more. So yeah. I'm hitting minus sign probably a little bit more than normal players. Because for me, it's a metaphor of like, okay, let me pull out my map, unfold it, and check yeah. it. Like you would do like in the yeah. pre-GPS, in like when you're taking a hike in the yeah. 1990s or something. Um, it just feels fun to me. So I check the map a lot and then you try to memorize the map and then you try to like do it on the game instead of just making sure it lines up with the mini map. With that said, when the caves weren't showing up on the main map, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to, <laughs> where the heck am I? I don't know. But that's kind of like I just said, that's the fun of it. You kind of go into these yeah. weird little portals. You slowly memorize left, right, or center. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll specifically throw um, a glow barrier, whatever they're called, mm. in a certain spot. I'll mark, I'll Hansel and Gretel mark yeah, I was say. my path, so, and which is all great. It's all exploration, right? Um, or if I come in a certain door, I'll throw a glowy thing down so that you can. If there's like four or five other entryways or exits, mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I'm there right now. We like they don't really have. They do have a compass in your mini map, but they don't have a compass as an item. And um, so much fun to the point where when you do go into a cave on one side and let's say pop out of that cave on the other side of a mountain. You feel like you found this cool little shortcut. Like you found like mm-hmm. you gen- you feel like you genuinely explored and discovered something. I love it. And it's cool when some of them are like behind waterfalls or in like mm-hmm. ice caves and things like that. Because it really feels like you can go in and pop out into like this other secret world. <laughs> well, and that's the most fun is when you find what would essentially be like a pass. And what yeah. I mean by that is a cave that actually goes out somewhere else too. Uh-huh. You and know, it- and there's some massive ca- there's some massive mm-hmm. mountains that you cut through. Mm-hmm. And there's some that also have like three or four extra ex- exits and entrances. Yes, yeah. Or or when you go down into a well and it's just like the 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 wells under Hatno Village, I think are a blast. I was gonna say I love the well system too. Yeah, yeah. Almost getting lost is okay. Yeah. Oof. 
Oh, it's so fun. Very cool. Any other ma- major? I'm, I'm accidentally hosting. No, I was just about to ask you the same thing. If you had any other thoughts. I haven't gone to Death Mountain yet by design. I've purposely stayed away just to, so I can take in. Because I've been skipping and spotting myself all over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't really teleport that much, but I've been. You know, I've been playing a little bit very, I've been playing very ADD in that. I'm just kind of like, I shall go to that hill yeah. now. Now I'll go check out that forest. Um, and and I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to lose focus on some of these. Like I didn't even go back into Gerudo Village yet mm-hmm. to realize I could do the thing. So there's a part of me that's like, all right, I've already kind of unearthed. I've done three dungeons. Yeah. So I have those three characters following me. And I'm kind of like, all right, let me let me saturate myself into these areas a little bit more before I go to Death Mountain. So I haven't gone there yet. Um, I was fine with the Zora changes. You know, it's kind of fun. We've already talked about the relationship of of Sidon and his fiance and stuff like that. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah. Nothing about um, Zora's domain struck me. Nothing really felt changed much. And the actual domain isn't that changed. It's really yeah. like what's happening around it. It was fine. Yeah. Um. I was going to say, I can't, I mean, Death Mountain, I, there might have been bigger changes, but to me, it kind of felt similar. Similar? Okay. Noted. Like, things didn't feel too different. Maybe some mining groups here and there that weren't there before, but the main town felt similar. I don't want to get too hot takey, but how do you feel about, I'll say, the exclusion of um, like guardians and stuff? Like Narratively, yeah. we know that they've all been destroyed and... And Pura has even found ways to use them as a positive by using the, you know, it's fun that they're part of the tower. Uh-huh. Like they've reprogrammed the robots. I get it that that's the narrative. But mechanically, so weirdly, sometimes I miss the Guardians. I didn't really, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I, I didn't really engage with them too much. I was always too scared. I just love sneaking around them so much. Yeah, I it just, I was, I've never been someone that snuck around i kind of joke a lot that my i mean it's true my favorite assassin's creed game is assassin's creed valhalla which is a game where you do not you're not an assassin you're a viking that just runs into stuff okay i don't i'm not a huge stealth game person yeah uh that was always my brother's cup of tea i was always the one that ran in guns blazing so the exclusion of the guardians was kind of like nice don't have to worry about them anymore sure (laughs) am i to understand that the master cycle or whatever is not in this game the one that's the end of the DLC in Breath of the Wild. Oh, I saw. Like, I need to play it still. I need to play the DLC still. For Breath? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I'm just realizing like, oh, some, you know, that's, I think it's okay that the uh, the Master Cycle or whatever it's actually called is not in tears. What is, what is the Master Cycle? Well, Link gets a motorcycle at the end of Breath. Oh, I didn't realize that's what you were calling it. I don't know if that's actually what it's called. Okay. The, the Master yeah, Cycle, I know you got a motorcycle. The Master Cycle might technically be the blue horse car in Mario Kart 8. <laughs> I don't know. You know, Link has a okay. couple different motorcycles. Yeah, the motorcycle. I yeah, I glad it hasn't I popped up in tears for you. No, huh? no, okay. I'm glad right. it didn't. I mean, I guess you know, in some ways, you really just make your own now. With all there's, there's plenty no of people that have made now. like you know fast little things. Mostly, I've been experimenting with the um, I, my recent gameplays have been playing around with the abilities of the um, stabilizers. I've been doing a lot of stabilizer yeah. play. You know, you put them sideways and you make them straight up. Um, I did like a little uh, unicycle the other day. I made a yeah. unicycle with a stabilizer. I've seen people make like ones that were super duper tall yeah. trying to like, ride them around. I like seeing what other people create. It's so funny. Um, yeah, there's a couple YouTube channels I watch where it's like crazy things. In Tears of the Kingdom people have made always a, bl- always a blast. But I, I, I don't mind sometimes just sitting around for an hour and building something. And as you know, the way I play Tears right now, it's in these kind of one hour chunks. Mm-hmm. It's just whenever I can sli- you know, slide it into my schedule in my day. So sometimes um, if, that, if, if I have one main takeaway from a, from a meta point of view, I'm experiencing Tears of the Kingdom differently than Breath. Because when Breath of the Wild came out, my life was such that I could do like a four-hour gaming session or something like mm-hmm. that and really sink in. And with Tears, I've been forced to just because I'm going back to school now and all that kind of stuff, I've been forced to kind of just drop in for an hour every other night. And that's kind of how I'm experiencing Tears. Yeah. So for better or for worse, and sometimes I wish I could do like a good five-hour play, you know, afternoon play session or something like that. Um, but I am experiencing Tears a little bit more sporadically, and I'm probably not remembering as much of the context or the larger connecting themes. And I look forward to some of those coming together and having conversations like this with you help with some of that. So now I'm like, Ooh, I want to go back to Gerudo town or I want to, you know? And so that's been a thing. I actually, in some ways I just realized Katie, the way you were joking about skipping all the dialogue in Skyward the first time you played Uh 
for me, sometimes I feel like maybe I'm skipping as much as I like to explore and get saturated into different environments and games. I think my play style in tears has been a bit like, let's go over here now, let's go over there now, let's go over here now. I mean, I've already talked about stories about just fully abandoning dungeons mid dungeon, just because I feel like going somewhere else, Mm -hmm. because that's what suits me on a Wednesday night compared to a Sunday night or something like that. Um, that, that maybe, maybe I do wish I was able to sink into some of this a little bit more, yeah. but, but it's okay. It's just, you know, games are what they are as we play them in our stages of life. And so I'm also recognizing that I think I'm accidentally experiencing tears in a slightly different way than breath, but also I'm not worried about it because <laughs> we know this is the game we're playing for the next five years. That's true. I think that's a good uh, thing to kind of leave it off on. Sure. The game we're going to be playing for the next five years until something new. <laughs> yep, yep, it's true. I think it'd be kind of fun if Nintendo like full circles back to like, well, we're probably going to get it's. I mean, I feel like it's in the cards for like an HD Ocarina. I was going to say Ocarina. The next original, it'd be kind of fun if they went down back down to like a, a top down or something like that. Just really because how yeah. do you come off of the Breath trilogy? Like, yeah, if you just make another 3D Zelda. It's, there's going to be so many comparisons. Maybe that's what will happen. I was going to say, I don't see how they could go back to not an open world style. I feel like that'd be so hard. Well, what if it was something in the vein of that kind of 2D open world model they made for Breath of the Wild? And it was like a full like 2D realized game, um, but with the systemic mechanics of an open world game. That could be yeah, kind of fun. That could be cool. I'm very interested to see what they come up with next. We'll see. They're not even, uh, IG Anuma has said openly that right now they're just taking their, their like everyone's taking Absolutely. a good hard breath. <laughs> they're going to see what inspires them over the next five or six months. And then they'll start kind of going from there. They deserve a break. <laughs> they deserve to take a breath. It's after been all over, that. over a decade. The, the breath trilogy, if we include age of calamity, um, has been over a decade. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. All right. Well, any, All right. oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Eager. Uh, let's wrap it up. So David, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Um, I'm over on Twitter and, and threads and Instagram at Raptor paint. Um, that's, that's it. I'll just stick it, stick to that today. You can do okay. our, you can do our show outro stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, if you want to find me personally, you can find me at my website, katieroberts.com, spelled K-A-D-Y, or on my Instagram at Mind of Katie. And if you want to see more of Another Zelda podcast, you can find us at our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, or you can find us on pretty much every social media at either Another Zelda podcast or Another Zelda pod, if that doesn't come up. Oh yeah. It's Another Zelda pod on Twitter, but everything else is Another Zelda podcast. Perfect. All right, we're going to call this one here. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we're probably going to keep on recording, but you guys will hear that for a little bit. We're going to, rec- well, we're, tonight behind the curtain, we're also recording our Skyward Sword episode. So the next episode will be us discussing characters in Skyward Sword. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I think that one's just kind of deep divey, too. We didn't feel, build it as a favorites or a top 10 or anything. No, I think we're just going to talk, talk about, about characters. it. All right. We'll have to make sure we don't do too many deep dives. We'll have to stay on format with some of this stuff, but I'm into it. Yeah. So we'll see you in two weeks uh, when we talk about Skyward Sword characters. Characters of Skyward Sword? Uh, characters in Skyward Sword? Most interesting. No. <laughs> Ooh. That might be something. Oh, uh, fun characters. Sky, I don't know. Skyward Sword characters. Only the good ones. Only <laughs> only the ones I like, but it's not a favorites. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole title. Yeah. That'll work real well for SEO. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. All right, all right. <laughs> Bye-bye.